still have a lot of these at least at all. Uh, so I'm going, last time that I have hacked on the new thing, and this time is Atom, the other like, editor that is easy to be programmable. So uh, what I've done, I start from the demo. So that what, that what I've done is like the markdown preview, that what you have typed in the left hand side will be, sh will be displayed on the right hand side as a web view. So uh, suppose that Google Then right hand side should be a link to Google and voila. So uh, uh, what's Atom? Atom that is the GitHub uh, editor and it has been released and we build on the framework is Electron which is also based on the WebKit and which is pretty easy to hack on it uh, because it has, it's built on the WebKit so you can use JavaScript, HTML and uh, unlike NeoVing, it's all binary and you, oh, you have to like uh, watch on its API. And it's also very rich interactive environment like Emacs, you basically can't do anything with JavaScript. Yeah, and Atom API that is like, you can do whatever in the repo loop that uh, it comes with a developer console. Yeah, you can, it's, it's basically like Chrome console that here's some debug message that you can print at anything you want. The, and suppose that editor that you can like do anything, uh, what's specifying the API in the, in the repo loop. Yeah. So, uh, but the what's different is that I want uh, some of you that might know that GFC.js which compiled GS, uh, Haskell code into JavaScript. And uh, so the most uh, critical part in the Markdown Previewer is that I delegated to Haskell, which comes with a Markdown package that transforms all of the Markdown syntax into HTML. Then after that, I basically just need to like write it to the file and load that file into WebView. And but it, so it turns out that the code is pretty short. That uh, I just need to like render Markdown and call the render HTML from the Markdown syntax. The only tricky part is that how to make JavaScript world talk to the GSC.js world, which is also compiled JavaScript, but it comes with its own runtime, and you have to pass argument to it, which is the markdown string from the editor, which I can get editor and get string from the Atom API, and then pass it back to the, uh, to, to the JavaScript world, which is the compile HTML. So, um, uh, the good thing is that the JavaScript have global variable. When, whenever it doesn't prefix with var, it goes to the window nameset, which is top level. So uh, GSD just have uh, import, uh, which is FFI, then you can do any unsafe thing for it. Then uh, what I have basically done is to set the function you have implement in the uh, Haskell world into a global variable. Then in the JavaScript side, you have the global variable which you can like get its property that and like or it's just set its property to pass it to the Haskell world, then set another property by convention, then pass it back to JavaScript world. So I I've been using is like get property markdown string, which is like explain itself that which is just a global variables property like having the markdown string and set it by, a, by convention a return value to the same property, a same object with the return uh, attribute. 
So the main function, because it has to be made, so then when you uh, compile with gsc.js, you just like specify the process mode so that it doesn't count with uh, some node.js uh, runtime overhead or, or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's all. So, um, that's what I've been uh, explaining. Yeah. And compile to JS, uh, which I also described, I, I, I compiled it with a stack execute. Ex ex uh, somebody had done with some snapshots, so you can also, you don't have to like down, uh, follow the instruction from the GSC.js, which is also easy instruction, but I, I like to be isolated, like stack has its own like snapshot locally. <coughs> then uh, you, s uh, this one is important that you have to specify GSC.js browser, otherwise when you run it, it will like bump into some error. Then you just compile that into render.js, which uh, at this moment I don't like it is that, which is uh, pretty large, that this, the render.js, uh, which is uh, six megabytes, it doesn't come with closure compiler to minimize it, so it's like full symbol, but still pretty large that if you like. Yeah. So yeah, it, it would definitely help yeah, because I, I don't want to minimize it since I want to know how to like make two sides of the world communicate each other. Oh, yeah. yeah, so uh, actually you can also search for the render markdown, but uh, render markdown. That it, it, it comes with the, that the foreign function call. So somehow that it just sat there as a global variable. So you can see that there's no var before it, that so it will come with a global variable. <coughs> yeah. So uh, then in the atom side, I still need some like gluing code for that, that I just like basically what I have described it. First, having a option object with a markdown string uh, field name that we, which is agree on convention and pass it then calling back with the return attribute. Then I just like write it into a file then uh, load the value with its source as the file. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Uh, oh, there's typo, but that's how you develop Atom. So that's the whole like, you can like quickly hack on a uh, like plugin with okay. GSM. Uh, uh, which is the target file, the compiled Tasco file. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. At Atom still like need to uh, oh. like first. Here's some like minimum gluing code. So uh, here I, uh, the, the show it will be called when I like start the plugin. So here's the, some debug message. First I call its API all under Atom's uh, uh, namespace, atom.workspace.active editor, which has the focus. Then I get editor as long as not now. Then I start adding an observer function. Once, whenever I start typing and the event like uh, have like stop for a few a few millisecond, then this listener will listener will be called. Then I can get its text. Then use that to render the uh, the contents. Yeah, this is plugin code. I still need the gluing part to get editor's text, which is a whole editor's content for markdown. Uh, how exactly does the, the plugin then look like? Like, do you have a folder where you have these three, three, three JS files? Uh, the, the whole like, lay, plugin layout that you can generate with Athens 
that command line that it will ge generate whole, the whole uh, layer that this uh, in this directory the lib menus spec style bmaps all are generated by atom so uh, the only and this uh, this uh, star plat platinum view and star platinum is also generated by atom command line only the render .js is what I compile and copy here yeah then uh, but still uh, for the generated code that you, uh, which is very minimum, but runnable that you just like uh, loading something and having a alert window. So the green code is like to basically just like like you you would dump, you would do whatever GUI like usually you have, when you develop cross platform you have a core part that serving the core functionality you want then having the blue in code in your like uh, whatever is editor or displaying interface that like calling the back end and get result back and drawing. So they follow the same logic. For, for sure you can like still use uh, like having some message passing by convention to GSC JS in, in some of minimum, minimal like GUI functionality but that would like introduce too much overhead. So I prefer to like s still write a little bit JavaScript to make it work. Like it looks more lightweight to me. Yeah. That I, this is that another like, file. Most of them are uh, generated. So yeah. And web view is like pretty useful be because web view basically you can do anything like yeah without the uh, atom works workspace has some limitation. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it's part of the plugin, right? That uh, when you install it, it's in the in your local system. So it's the size factor. Like, do you have, do you think it's a problem with factors, or would you just say like, well, it's a six megabyte that doesn't matter? Uh, initially, I w was worried about it, but it seems like for atom speed, it's like good enough for for like to afford GSC JS runtime. Well, maybe for larger plugin, it might introduce some issue, but for this one, it seems fine. Yeah. So when the overhead is, is, is just constant, right? I mean, uh, for, for communication, yeah, just one constant is, is property, so. So, <coughs> like, even, like, okay, what is the overhead here mean? Does it mean that if you edit the markdown uh -huh. and you save the file, uh -huh. and it takes a long time for the web view to refresh itself? Or what, what exactly is the user visible uh, I, I think it's uh, what Sunke is asking about the GSCJS, its own, like what have compiled into the JavaScript file is overhead. And of course that's the, my implementation that is like pretty like straightforward, that just won't write whatever into the file and load it into web. Uh, I am sure that there are some better way to do it. So, but for Stonker's no, problem. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Uh -huh. Like, suppose you, you know, edit your markdown file, uh -huh. and then you, as, soon, I, as I understand that you save it, it runs it, JCJS generates uh -huh. the JavaScript, generates the HTML, which is then displayed, right? Mm -hmm. As long as you know, the time between saving the file and seeing the update the HTML, as long as that's short enough, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter if it's six megabytes or six GB. Uh, yeah, it yeah. depends on the size of the JavaScript file, right? Yeah. How much load it. So mm -hmm. Yeah, in the memory. I mean, of course, it could be that if you if you link in lots and lots of libraries, then it, it will blow up your memory consumption, but mm. it's mm. But I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I guess that's today. <laughs>